Cambridge Health Alliance is now making COVID-19 testing available to existing system patients via a standalone testing center at its Somerville Hospital location. Due to continued limited availability of tests, patients must meet federal criteria and be existing CHA primary care patients to be eligible for testing at this location. Testing will be conducted in a tent located at the Crown Street parking lot adjacent to Somerville Hospital at 33 Tower Street. Testing began on March 18th and will be provided seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Only current CHA primary care patients can currently be tested at this location. Patients must call their primary care provider to be screened and tests will not be provided without prior authorization. CHA will be able to test authorized patients who arrive on foot. Due to the continued limited supply of tests, only patients who meet federal CDC criteria will be eligible to receive testing. CHA will continue to monitor the situation and make changes as circumstances evolve. Patients and community members wanting more information about testing should visit www.challiance.org for updated information. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues here at the Health Alliance and the CEO, Dr. Sayat, uh, from the City of Cambridge, City Manager Lou D. Pasquale, for all that safe social distancing, and Mayor Sumbo Siddiqui, we want to welcome you here to the campus of the Somerville Hospital for the launch of a mobile testing site. Uh, I want to thank the Cambridge Health Alliance, Dr. Sayad, and their leadership. We know we have two tools, important tools at our disposal, if we're going to combat this epidemic. Uh, one is robust and broad testing, and the federal government has botched that. But thanks to the efforts of health organizations like the Health Alliance, we're trying to make strides to make sure we expand that testing. If we have that data, we have that information, we can be strategic in how we try to contain the virus. We can get people the services they need. We can protect our healthcare workers. The other is what we're exercising here, extreme social distancing. The cities of Somerville and Cambridge and the coalition leading 140 cities and towns and Commonwealth are working collectively together. We're enacting policies beyond the governor's orders, which we applaud to make sure we keep our community safe. Well, our way of life has changed in the short term, and we need to understand we need to make these sacrifices if we're going to avoid consequences in the long term. This epidemic is a health crisis which we've never seen before in our lifetime. It is serious. Some epidemiologists, medical experts expect that Massachusetts will have more than 10,000 cases by the end of March. Some predict a surge will overrun our healthcare system. Now more than ever, we need to work together, state and local government and our federal partners. We need to step it up. We need to increase testing. We need to make more test kits available. We need to support our hospital systems. The Cambridge Hospital, the Cambridge Health Alliance is an important safety net. It protects and helps some of the, and cares for some of the most vulnerable populations in the metropolitan Boston area. And we need to make sure, especially our vulnerable residents are cared for. But we need to work together. So today's one important step where we can provide testing services and try to get as much information to help us work smarter, work together to try to contain transmission of the virus. I want to thank you for coming out today. At this time, I'd like to introduce the CEO of the Cambridge Health Alliance, Dr. Sayan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for being here and for your patience and support and, and uh, the willingness to come here and make sure that we're doing the right thing for our patients and communities. Uh, I'd like also to recognize uh, the mayor of Cambridge and uh, the manager of the city of Cambridge, Mr. Pasquale, and uh, state that we're working very closely with our communities, with our municipalities, to make sure that we're educating our public, to make sure that we're keeping our public safe, to make sure that these, the steps that we're taking are appropriate and uh, they're aligned with the work that's being done by all healthcare workers, all public safety workers, all our municipalities, to educate our neighborhoods and our patients. First, I want to recognize the neighborhood in here and their willingness uh, to let us do this work. Uh, and we've been working very closely with the city and with our neighborhoods and with our communities to make sure that they are safe and we are safe. The reason we are doing this is to make sure that patients that have any concerns or have any symptoms 
have the resources and the knowledge to get the care when they need it, where they need it, at the time that they need it in an appropriate way. This is one step of a comprehensive process and a program that we put together over the last few weeks. And we're initiating this <clears throat> throughout the whole organization, starting with Somerville and eventually spreading it to the rest of the Cambridge Health Alliance. In this stage, as uh, uh, Mr. Mayor said, we are practicing social distancing. This is very, very critical. And we are practicing and educating patients, one, to stay home when they need to and seek help when they need to. The best thing we can do is approach this unprecedented situation as if every one of us is infected, right from the get-go. This is the right way to make sure that coronavirus does not spread and does not infect millions or tens of millions of people in the United States. So we have to approach this every day as if we are infected and to make sure that our family stays safe, our community stays safe, our, our colleagues stay safe. At the Cambridge Health Alliance, throughout the organization, we're making sure that our patients get care, as I said earlier, at the right time, at the right place. So today, when one of our patients call any of our clinics, the first thing they hear is, if you have an emergency, call 911. The second thing they hear is, if you have any respiratory symptoms, headache, fever, cough, shortness of breath, dial two. When they dial the number, they get automatically connected to our localized triage center. Our triage center is manned by clinicians, nurses, physicians that appropriately ask patients their symptoms and what their needs are. And they triage them appropriately to one of multiple categories. Most patients would be asked to stay home. If they have no symptoms, they have almost minimal symptoms, and if they're healthy. Patients that require an evaluation, they will be triaged to a centralized clinic that is specialized in caring for patients that could have coronavirus infection. That clinic will have the capacity to test patients also at the clinic with their evaluation. And patients that need testing and don't need to the clinic, they'll be sent here. They'll be pre-registered and they'll go through and we'll talk about which steps they go through them and they get tested and they go home without leaving their car. The idea in here is not to spread the disease, to provide patients the care that they need, protect our patients, other patients, and our staff. And for patients that have uh, severe sickness, they'll be triaged to go to the emergency departments where our staff is ready and able to care for them. So as patients get here initially, those would be Cambridge Alliance, Alliance patients. Why are we doing this? We're doing this initially for the CHA patients because we want to make sure that we are cohorting patients based on their symptoms and not spreading the infection. And to make sure that when they get here, they are already pre-registered because we have an electronic health record and we don't spend a lot of time in identifying patients and making sure that when we have the test results, we don't go chase them. We have all that information on hand. So when they get here, the first stop is at the first tent. We'll identify the patient, make sure that they're pre-registered, and they go through, get tested, they receive a lot of information, and they go home without leaving their car. When we get the test back, we will notify the patient with the results. In the meanwhile, we will keep checking on the patients and make sure that they remain uh, safe. Um, Happy to answer any questions. Doctor, do you feel bad supplies for your healthcare workers to keep them safe? Talk about your supply here in Somerville for your hospital. That's a, that's a great question. Um, this is something that's common throughout healthcare in general. Um, last week I had the opportunity to speak to many of our uh, uh, politicians, both locally and nationally. And one of the major issues that we're facing, not only at the Healthcare Alliance, uh, but in healthcare in, in, in general, is shortage of personal protective equipment, particularly masks. And um, uh, we want to make sure that we have appropriate supplies for the long run. This is not a matter of a day or two or week. This may take weeks or months to get through this. And we want to make sure that we're projecting and planning for the long run. And today, I'm happy to say that with a lot of work that we're doing in 
appropriate utilization uh, and uh, securing some external supply, we have a week to two weeks on hand. Now, this may sound a lot. That's not a lot. Um, last week, we had three days' supply of masks on, uh, on hand. So this is something that's absolutely critical. And if we're going to ask um, our healthcare professionals to be on the front line and care for patients that have these symptoms, we want to make sure that they're appropriately protected. One, so they can come to work and do the work. And two, because we're going to need them for many, many days, potentially weeks, healthy, to be able to care for their patients. And last but not least, we don't want them to take their sickness back to their families and get them sick. So it is absolutely important and, and critical to um, uh, think about where are, where are the personal protective equipment outside of healthcare that we could redeploy uh, that, that cachet back to healthcare. And we have a lot of research labs, uh, people work in, 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 in education, construction, uh, you name it, that have masks, uh, food processing. We need to rethink where is the best place to, uh, to redeploy these resources. Can you speak to how this process of testing and this setup, how does that impact the overall fight against coronavirus? Because we're going to see more of these not just by Cambridge Health Alliance. Absolutely. Obviously, it's the speed, but how does it impact our fight overall, the bigger picture? Uh, uh, the, the, the way that this impacts is to make sure that patients that have some symptoms uh, get tested without impacting the, the organization or other healthcare personnel. So patients that call and they have some symptoms, as I said earlier, you don't want to bring them to uh, an emergency department or to a clinic if you can avoid doing this. Uh, it is helpful also by assuring the public that we have facilities where they can get tested. Uh, a lot of the public have questions, and if we can answer those questions, they'll be assured and they'll be comfortable listening to us and staying home most of the time or going to get care based on their symptoms and needs uh, with the information that they provide us. So the way that this works, it is one piece of the puzzle, of the continuum, uh, based on the patient's symptoms and the needs. It starts with education. It continues with making sure that we have social distancing, uh, practicing appropriate uh, hygiene, washing hands, etc. cetera. And um, uh, you know, to, to um, the mayor's uh, point, uh, being home is not a vacation. Uh, being home is you really need to be somewhat uh, distanced from, from other people. Uh, it is not time to have parties, etc. Make sure that um, you're not communicating, uh, potentially communicating uh, the, the corona to other people if you have it or getting it from other people. So again, it's one piece of the puzzle. Do you anticipate that they would soon be open to the general public? Is there value in that? Um, we, as I said earlier, we're gonna start with the Cambridge Health Alliance, want to make sure that patients go to the right place at the right time and also for the pre-registration and, and uh, patient, our patients uh, to get pre-registered take about a minute, but patients that are new to us take a long time because we have to get all that information, and that could really clog the process. Eventually, uh, we're going to open more than one place. We're going to have more than one uh, location, and eventually it will be open to the public. Who will be conducting the tests, and how many people do you expect to have out here, at least in the beginning? Great. So initially, the, the process starts, as I said, on, on the phone. The second step, it starts at the tent in the back, where patients will be identified through their ID and make sure that they, have, that they are pre-registered. Uh, patients that show up here and they're not pre-registered, if they are Cambridge Health Alliance patients, they'll be asked to park in one of the parking spots, call our triage line, get appropriately uh, triaged to where they need to go, get pre-registered, and if they qualify, they get through and get testing. Inside the tent, we have two additional stations. The first station for, is for testing. Um, that uh, is manned by clinicians. Uh, patient will get appropriately uh, tested. The swab is done and, and the sample is obtained, labeled appropriately. And on the way out, the patient will get appropriate education and, and material to take home with on what to expect, uh, what are the resources, 
and when uh, do they expect us to call them uh, for follow-up and results of the testing? And they continue going. They do not leave their car. All personnel working at this site uh, will be wearing personal protective equipment, um, uh, complete papers, uh, to make sure that they remain safe. What's the turnaround time for the test? Um, we haven't done one yet, uh, but we expect it's going to be four to six minutes. Every four to the six results? minutes, we'll, we'll, get, no, we'll get a patient going through. The results is two to four days. How do you address the growing concern about healthcare professionals being expected but asked, <laughs> even when showing symptoms, to continue treating patients and that spreading the disease not only here but nationwide and worldwide? Right. Uh, that's a great question. Um, Thank you. Initially, we're not going to ask people that show symptoms to work and expose other, uh, other healthcare personnel uh, and patients to, to the disease. Um, we have other ways for people to work from home and to work remotely. Uh, one of the things that we've done is uh, we, uh, we worked with all our clinics to um, categorize patients' visits as needed or visits that could be done virtually or could be postponed. And these are not only visits, but also procedures and surgeries. So what we can do for um, our healthcare force at risk or potentially mildly sick, they can do a lot of that work virtually. Uh, they can take phone calls, they can do um, um, video conferencing uh, visits for our patients. Uh, we can do counseling, we can do education. There's a lot of things that, that uh, all our healthcare force, not only the physician or the, or the clinicians, they can do remotely. And one of the things that we're keeping in mind, as I said earlier, is this is a marathon, this is not a sprint. So we have to be very thoughtful not to burn out our healthcare force in the first week or two. Uh, and we want to make sure that we are cycling our work, work, uh, healthcare force uh, and, um, and give, giving them appropriate time to rest and recover uh, and make sure that they're available to care for our patients downstream when, when we have more demand. Thank you. Doctor, can you just speak to um, <clears throat> other patients who are not suffering from coronavirus to postpone things now and postpone surgeries? That right. Kind of thing? So, as I said earlier, we are uh, uh, we are going through our appointments and based on a protocol that we devised, uh, categorizing those appointments, whether they are procedures, surgeries, or appointments as routine, elective, or emergent or urgent. Uh, we are maintaining emergent and emergent appointments, uh, procedures, and surgeries. And the ones that could be either uh, postponed, rescheduled, or done virtually, uh, we are doing that as, we, as, as we're speaking. Uh, the key in here is to make sure that we're providing appropriate information and access to our patient population and not to create panic and people saying, well, you know, I don't know what's going on with me. I have no access. I'm going to show up. Uh, to a clinic or to the emergency department and potentially either um, transmit my infection to other people or get infected if I don't have the infection. And the idea in here is to make sure that we remain safe, our patients are safe, our visitors are safe, and just as importantly, our workforce is safe. Um, Has this crisis affected the closing of the emergency room here? Uh, it's a great question, again. <laughs> Um, this is something that we are uh, evaluating on a day-by-day -day basis, and we want to make sure that we are utilizing all the resources of the community to care for the patients that we need. Uh, you've mentioned people being tested from their vehicles. Um, can people arrive on foot, and would the process change if they do? They can arrive on foot, uh, and the process will not change uh, dramatically. We want to make sure that... Obviously, they're out in, in the elements where to make sure that they're safe and they're warm and they're not transmitting the uh, potential sickness or get sick themselves. So, yes, uh, arriving on foot, they'll be appropriately evaluated and cared for. Or on bike. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> we are in some of them at the end. <laughs> Is this costing the alliance, and are you expecting to um, break even or whatever? Are you going to... Is the, is the, what's the money part of this? Uh, that's, a, that's another great question. Uh, um, we need to do what we need to do. We are an organization of mission, and we want to make sure that we're here for our 
uh, patients and communities. Uh, we are trying our best. Uh, we're keeping our we're keeping track of, um, as all other organizations, of the expenses in here. Uh, but we are here to take care of our patients and populations. Uh, and there are multiple ways that this is affecting uh, the organizations, just like all other industries. Uh, we have canceled and um, and rescheduled most of our work out there, and most of our work is, is in the outpatient uh, area, in the ambulatory area, to make sure that we're keeping our uh, staff safe, our patients safe, <laughs> and uh, saving our resources, most important resources, uh, our healthcare force uh, for the long run. Uh, so um, it's hard to quantify the business loss, but the business expense uh, is quantifiable. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea in here is, is it's not about finances. The idea in here is about doing the right thing, and, and that's what we're doing in here. Just a couple of pieces of information uh, that probably we need to add. Uh, this is uh, one of at least three other facilities that will open over the next few days within the Cambridge Health Alliance. And this facility has the capacity of uh, testing uh, around 100 patients a day. Uh, it'll be open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And at the beginning, we are uh, restricting this to our patients uh, for the reasons that we stated earlier. Uh, last words, please stay safe. Uh, practice social distancing. Make sure you wash your hands. And make sure you assure your families uh, that we will get through this. It's going to be a rough patch. But as a, uh, as a community, uh, as a, an organization, as, an, an, as a country, we will get through this. And the way we get through this depend on what we do in the meanwhile. So as the mayor said, please practice social distancing. Take this very seriously. Uh, and hopefully we can contain this and get through it with the minimum damage possible to, uh, to our patients, to our communities, and to our economy.